There is a phrase that's used often in the entertainment industry that's used to describe a product that shouldn't exist but continues to do so. This is the phrase, so bad it's good. Now, despite how oxymoronic that statement is, I would actually give praise to a film or a TV show or a game that's so bad it's good over anything else because I think it's the hardest type of product to make. For the right creative, making something like Better Call Saul or The Fall of the House of Usher is easier to make than something so bad it's good. And for another person, creating something like The Halo Show or She-Hulk is easier than creating something so bad it's good. But to actually make something so bad it's good, you have to get the perfect blend of actually trying to make a good product and actually not trying to make a good product. One of the most popular franchises that I would say does this is the Fast and Furious films. Now, they started out as okay products, but I think it's fair to say that the quality of the films has gone down tremendously with each instalment. On the surface, Fast and Furious 8, 9 and Hobbs and Shaw were completely awful films in every conceivable way, from the acting to the script to the fight scenes. However, the films play everything so seriously that it actually comes around to being a hilariously enjoyable experience. Watching Hobbs, who has hated Shaw for the past three movies they've been in, unironically call him brother and then start fist fighting a genetically enhanced shit talking Idris Elba, who completely forgets he has superpowers was one of the most enjoyable experiences I've ever had in a cinema because it was so awful I couldn't stop laughing. Obviously the go-to for this genre is The Room, the best worst film ever made. The shoddy production of the film led to it constantly being rewritten and scenes changed. The actors were hired and fired on a whim. Loads of money was spent on purchasing equipment and sets that could have just been rented out for a fraction of the cost. It's a film that's so bad that the actors just stopped trying, they couldn't care less about the finished product. However, because of the high budget, the bad dialogue played completely straight, and the sheer amount of awkwardness with the script and its production... Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses, please? Oh, hi, Johnny. I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go. Keep the change. Hi, doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot. Bye. It's impossible to not enjoy the room. And then on the gaming side, we have Ride to Hell Retribution. The story is kicked off by pure nonsense. The voice actors are trying to do their lines, but the performances are still bad because they can't voice act. The combat is clunky and unintuitive. The game was obviously designed as an open world game, but then had everything stripped out, leading to a heavily condensed story that seems to be all over the place. And of course, the sex scenes. Let me sum up how badly this story is written. What the? At one point you need to get into a compound, but there's an electric fence stopping you from just waltzing in. So instead of putting a blanket on top of it or finding a way to sneak in, you go across the street, fight a bunch of truckers, steal their truck, plow your way into a nearby dam that is supplying the electricity and then destroy all the generators. Just to reiterate that, you smash your way into a dam, kill a bunch of cops and innocent workers, and then cause so much damage to the dam that all the power in the nearby area stops, just to get over a fence that you could have just driven through with the truck you stole. This is the writing of the game, and it's fucking hilarious. And while the game can sometimes be unplayable, for the most part it is functional, just full of bugs and exploits. I thought it would be difficult to top this game in terms of how bad and fun it is. Until now, The Walking Dead Destinies is a game designed around the first four seasons of the TV show, and while you play through them you are given opportunities to change the story, with different events happening in a different way, and being given the opportunity to kill off or save characters compared to how things happened originally. I'm a bit of a fan of the multiverse and what if stories, so the premise of this game intrigued me. And then it was released. <laughs> I don't really know what I was expecting considering that this game is made by the same people who just made the new King Kong game that looks like this. But I will tell you this, 
The Walking Dead Destinies is one of the most hilarious games I've seen in a long time. For a start, the graphics look like something that could make a PS2 era game's graphics look amazing in comparison. The voice acting is once again the perfect blend between the actors trying and not being good at acting. It doesn't have to be this way! Shut your mouth or I'll shut it for you. The developers couldn't be bothered to animate full cutscenes, leading to still images being played in a sequence, often with the models in hilarious poses. The actual gameplay and mechanics seem like they should be competent enough, until you do something that isn't just walking forward and it promptly shits the bed, showing a lack of polish and playtesting so inexcusable that I doubt the developers played their own game. As of yet, I have not seen a single person praising this game as it's intended to be praised. People who are enjoying this game are enjoying it ironically. Now, I'm not going to say that this has been the worst game ever made since Ride to Hell Retribution. However, of the worst games that have been made since then, it is definitely one of the most popular ones that I can think of, alongside possibly the Lord of the Rings Gollum. And while I don't remember anyone having any faith in that game, I still remember seeing people thinking that the premise of The Walking Dead Destinies was unique, and they were looking forward to see all the different storylines. Now all I see is people asking how such a big branded game came out like this. Overall, The Walking Dead Destinies is a game that I need you to play because it's got a vibe about it that I can only describe as the gaming experience of Stockholm Syndrome. It's easy to watch funny clips online, but actually playing this thing for yourself is an experience that I cannot describe. And I mean this with complete sincerity when I say I would rather pay £40 for this than pay £70 for the newest AAA game because this is an experience that you will never forget and I need you to experience it. Thank you for watching lads and lasses. After seeing this game come out, I just couldn't stop talking about it. It really is one of the worst games I've ever seen. I'm not going to do a full breakdown of the game because someone else will do it a lot better than I can, but it is definitely so, so awful. But it is definitely just such an awful game that I need you to play it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, subscribing and checking out some of my other videos. And if you're feeling very generous, please look at my Patreon or my YouTube membership. But overall, I just hope you had a great day and hopefully I will see you in the next video.